All right, so the number one question and comment that I usually get on my site or my YouTube channel uh, relates to my tone in the jazz guitar context, and I think people are somewhat fascinated with my tone because I don't play a traditional hollow body guitar. Um, so what I'm going to do today is go through uh, a couple things relating to my tone, and uh, hopefully uh, some of you will find it helpful. Now, what I'm going to discuss in this video only relates to straight-ahead jazz guitar playing. So, um, everything from the pick I choose to, uh, you know, the amp I might use might be different in a different style of music. But um, in terms of straight-ahead jazz guitar playing, um, this is kind of the basis of of uh, what I what I use. All right. So, what I'm looking for is an evenness in the guitar where it's dark but it's not too muddy. So what I'm going to do here is put everything to the bridge pickup, turn the volume up, and uh, put the bass up. Or, you know, you could look at it as taking the treble down. And then I'm going to check the guitar. So I'm going to check the bottom of the guitar first. And what I'm looking for is a bassy tone that's not too muddy. And then I'll use a large chord. And I want to make sure I can hear every note clearly in that chord. Then I'll move to the middle, and I still want it to be somewhat bassy here, okay? Then I'll go to the top of the guitar after this, and I want this to be a little more punchy, but still not too trebly. All right, so for jazz guitar playing particularly, I use the jazz three pick, and I only use the red one. Um, I've used the black ones. I've used the Eric Johnson signature one, and um, I don't. I don't know. I find that those picks don't work for me as well um, in terms of playing, all, you know, real solid alternate picking lines, which I have a real affinity for, you know, a la sort of Pat Martino. Um, there's a new Jazz 3 pick actually I want to try that just came out, a yellow one, but I haven't tried that one yet. Um, I also use the one sometimes with the, with the grip on it, um, but this is my primary pick. Um, and, you know, I just want to take a minute to point out that I think the majority of your tone comes from your picking and your picking style. Um, and so, you know, my personal style tends to be kind of a hybrid between, you know, the Pat Martino style single line playing and maybe a little bit of Pat Metheny with some of the legato and pull off stuff I do. And then, um, you know, some sort of John Schofield ish um, hammer on uh, stuff that I do sometimes, too. Um, so I, I believe, you know, firmly that the majority of your tone is going to come from your right hand. So uh, that's pretty important to pay attention to. All right, I see a lot of people uh, speculate that I use uh, some type of really heavy string on my guitar. I actually don't. I use these. Uh, these are pretty light, these Diodario 10, 10 gauge. Um, I think the heavy tone um, that you hear sometimes, again, is just due to my right hand and um, the fact that sometimes I pick really heavy. Um, but, yeah, I like these a lot. They tend not to break too often, so I recommend them. All right, so this is a stock photo of the guitar that I use. Uh, I've looked into my guitar a little bit, and uh, it's just a standard American Strat. It was made in 1992. Um, the only modification that I made to it was I swapped out the pickups for uh, the lace sensor pickups, which I'll talk about next. Okay, so this is a picture of the lace sensor pickups that I use. Um, these pickups actually produce more bass than a traditional single coil pickup, so I think that it's... Um, a, a large factor in terms of how it affects my overall tone um, and I enjoy these quite a bit. 
All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about amplifiers, and I'm going to show you a couple amplifiers um, that I've used over the years. This, for me, is the ideal amp. This is a vintage uh, Fender Twin Reverb, and what I like about this amp is, you know, obviously it's a tube amp, so you can you can drive it a little bit, and you can also get uh, an even tone uh, with it as well. Um, I'm also going to show you right here this picture. This is a picture of the new reissue um, Fender Twin Reverb amp. So this is a, this is a great amp as well. And then we have the Fender Deluxe, which a lot of people use. Um, it's a little bit more economical, and um, so for that reason, I find a lot of people buy them. They're not too expensive, um, and it gets the job done, especially for you know small clubs and uh, you know restaurants and things like that. So definitely check this one out. All right, here's an amp that I used a lot at one point, and this is a Roland Jazz Chorus. This amp, I think, was popular maybe in the late 70s, early 80s, I believe. I know Pat Metheny used it early in his career. I think Pat Martino uh, used this as well. Um, this amp is not for me. Uh, that's all I'm going to say, but you might want to look into it uh, when you're looking through some of your options. All right, so what you're looking at now is a vintage polytone amp and this uh, this was a really popular amp with like old school arch top players you, like Joe Pass loved this amp you can get some beautiful sounds out of this amp especially if you're an arch top player so um, I recommend that you check this out if you're looking for that old school uh, jazz guitar sound um, it's also very small so a lot of players like it because you can kind of haul it around the city um, but yeah check this one out for sure all right, so what we're going to do now is talk about amp settings. And if you look at this visual image I put up there, it's kind of an example of um, amp modeling, but you'll get the idea looking at it. Um, so w what I like to do when I first start to set an amp is I put everything at, I guess what you'd say, 12 o'clock on the dial. And then I'll start backing off from there and making adjustments. Um, what you want to do is you want to start making the adjustments with your tar. Um, set up how you want it to be and obviously don't have any effects reverbs or EQs or compressors um, from there so I don't want the gain up too high because that's going to distort the signal right off the bat if you look at the base it's uh, backed off a little bit more than you'd ex expect you know I'm gonna reconcile that later with EQ um, and you'll see we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute the mids are in the middle the treble and the presence are a little bit higher than you'd probably expect and also the master and the output are somewhere around 12 o'clock. Uh, the reverb, usually I would just turn completely off um, in the amp itself, but for some reason I have it up uh, about 25% here. All right, so now we're looking at uh, compression settings. And I love compressors, especially in rock playing, but in jazz as well. Um, so a compressor can, can be your best friend in some cases. Um, it's, hard, it's hard for me to give too much of a technical um, example about compressors because I kind of use them more intuitively um, rather than having some real science about it. But this will give you some sense of the type of settings that I would use on a compressor in uh, the jazz guitar context. Okay, so now we're looking at EQ settings. And as I said before, this is where you can really see that I'm r r sort of... Um, accounting for the lack of, of bass coming out of the amp. As you can see, I have it turned up quite a bit here. I'm trying to keep the low and the highs even, and even the trebles pushed up a little bit um, here. But this is how I basically reconcile the fact that the amp is not set too muddy. Um, so this is primarily how I like to do it. I don't like to get it as much from the amp and try to get it more from a secondary source. All right, so the only pedal I'm gonna show today is uh, this uh, Boss RV3. And I actually learned about this from a great jazz guitar player named Jody Fisher. You guys should check him out online. He's really good. And um, he uses this pedal. I like it a lot. Um, you get digital delay and reverb in one pedal. And um, it's, it's pretty simple. So um, that's a pretty important one for me. All right, well, I hope you guys got something out of that lesson. Um, I hope it wasn't too abstract because... Um, I guess I have to admit, after all that, I'm not really much of a gearhead. Um, <laughs> so a lot of it's just been trial and error for me. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put some of these images together in a PDF and put it on my blog so you guys can check it out there. 
And then um, I'm going to find some videos uh, with people demonstrating some of the amps that I talked about. And uh, you can you can kind of hear what those sound like. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for checking out the lesson and uh, we'll see you again. Mm -hmm.